Hi there, I'm Yvette. And I'm Peter. And, and this, this is, is our bus, Abby. We've named our bus after Abby Ona, the Roman goddess of outbound travel. We're hoping for all the good omens we can get, because the plan is to convert Abby into a motorhome. We're complete newbies at this, and we're kind of hoping that these videos will act as a guide for someone else who's doing a similar thing, and someone might be able to pick up some tips on what to do, or more likely, uh, what not to do. In this video, we'll be covering the removal and restoration of the floor and the subfloor. Unfortunately, this video does drag on a bit. Sorry about that, and if you can stick it out to the end, then well done. Okay, so I've just done the, taking the lights out, and we've sort of found that it's you know quite rusty, and this timber's all shot as well. So I figured we might as well, while we're here, rip this piece of sheet of ply up. Um, we're going to replace it, but then at least we can see what's involved with repairing rust because I think there might be a little bit underneath perhaps um, and so we'll, we'll rip it up now um, try and keep it in <laughs> one piece as much as possible just to sort of use it to mark out a new sheet later but of course it's pretty much um, rotten all around this edge it's all rotten but um, at least that that, that uh, driver's side corner is still there so maybe we can use that as a template if not we might just have to um, measure and cut when it comes time to it, but we'll just see how it goes. Um, it's, it's, it's just coming apart mainly. Um, there are some, a few bolts, head, heads of bolts, but um, a lot of those have pulled through already. Um, you can sort of see that one there is um, the head's gone and a couple of others, the timber's not even actually still attached because the, the, the rot has pulled it away. Um, but there's like some of that black silicon under it, so I think that's pretty much now what's holding it down. So we're just going to rip it up and um, hope that this uh, board comes out in one piece or close to one piece. And um, we'll see if we can use it again later. So basically what we're doing here is um, basically it's just rotten mate, it's just rotten so we're taking the rotten one out, put the new one in, boom, done. Sweet as. So I've taken up the floor as you can see in the background there and uh, there was a bit of scraping and stuff involved getting the black mastic stuff off the floor which was a bit of a pain, getting the screws and things out and various things that we had to grind off and then go over and do with the rust converter. So uh, done all that, um, done a bit of a washout, did it, did it with the um, water blaster. It was okay, but you had to be a bit careful about what you were water blasting, of course, because there's wires and, and fuel pipes and stuff like that that you don't really want to get any water into. So I was just trying to avoid those as much as possible and trying to do mainly just the chassis and floor and stuff like that. We've had the dehumidifier going for a while to sort of um, take up any moisture. And then today I'm going to uh, try and paint all the under bus uh, with some black matte rust killer, rust proofer, um, just to sort of give it a coat because some of the areas under there are just a bit you know, thin on paint. So um, it'd be handy while the floor's up to be able to do that. So essentially we're getting prepped um, to put all the floor back in, or most of it. Uh, ordered water tanks to go in. Um, I'll show you a couple of spots where we're going to put them. Yeah, so, but they're probably a few weeks away, or at least a couple of weeks away now. So obviously up there is the cab, um, and so as we work our way back, um, we've got all the engine stuff under here, and then um, these are air conditioning units, so we obviously couldn't put our water tanks there. So there is our spot, for one, um, which is going to be the uh, grey water tank in that spot. And then over here, there's the batteries in the way. And so this is our spot for the fresh water tank that we're going to put under the floor, which is just in front of the wheel arch here. So that's going to be the spot. Now our tank's going to be a bit of a funny shape. 
Hopefully we can show you them when they get here. But um, yeah, they're just sort of made to fit the space so that we can maximise the space. Because it's not very long, it's only 600 long. Um, about 400, just over 400 wide. We're prepping and getting ready to do the floor, put the floor in essentially in all the areas that um, the tanks aren't going to go. I'm going to go ahead and cut and probably put down the floor in all those areas and then they probably for this area here where the tanks are going to go we're going to cut the sheets out um, get them all ready um, but then you know maybe just sit them in place for a week or whatever until the tanks show and then we'll be able to put the tanks in. So kia ora folks, um, yeah back in the bus today um, the last couple of days I've spent uh, doing the spray painting of underneath the chassis and the subfloor uh, structure essentially and pretty much anything that I could get at um, I've painted just to sort of give it a bit of a rust protection essentially before we put the floor back down I've got the plywood and everything ready to do the floor but yeah we thought we it'd be handy to be able to get that done and have peace of mind that it's all pretty good to go from now on if uh, you know going forward it was a bit of a messy job because I had to get under the bus crawling around under there trying to do everything from below and then once uh, once I'd done those bits from below I came up the top and of course painted whatever I could get at from the top uh, I'll show you the result in a second but yeah I'm ready to do um, the putting the floor down in some areas um, we're just going to avoid the areas where we're putting the tanks just so that it keeps it clear so we can drop them in from above and work on them from above make it easier some of the ones we're actually going to fix in place um, now because there's no real need for them to be uh, sort of in, in temporary or anything like that um, once we get them down we can leave them down that's the plan so I'm going to start cutting the boards out today uh, it's getting a bit late in the day so I'll, I'll start and then we'll probably carry on tomorrow and hopefully get it finished uh, in the next couple of days I'll show you what's going on with what I've painted so far. So it's a bit dark in here anyway. The paint I used is black. It's a matte black. It's an enamel paint. I used the matte one just because I didn't really want it all super glossy. Because um, the actual chassis uh, paint that's on there you know, originally is sort of a matte. And I thought well, it would be best if it was the same sort of stuff as, as what they'd used originally. So this is at the very back. Um, of course we couldn't get our tanks in here because there's a bit... Um, going on down there we're going to cover this one in um, so that'll be I'll put a, my first floorboard down there and fix it in place and then we've got around here forward of the the wheel arches uh, this is so I've painted everything from above and below uh, everything I could get at except for the exhaust of course yeah essentially everything I could get at that wasn't either mechanical uh, you know sort of supposed to be rotating or anything like that I haven't painted anything like that and tried to avoid pipes and electrics where I could but the rest of the actual steel uh, structure I've um, put uh, the black paint on so that hopefully it will um, protect it for um, a few years to come yeah next step is to start putting some floorboards down so I'm going to do all the way uh, up the front there from right, just behind the driver's seat to just the just here where the step is I'm going to do that, that area there and then uh, this area, is a, there's another board that goes across here, I'm going to leave that one, I'll probably cut it, but I'm going to leave it out and not stick it down or anything, um, because our tank's going there. And, and then this, this space here also we're going to leave out because our tank is going down here. Um, so that, that board that goes across here will be cut, but I won't fix it. And the same with that one. Okay, well this is the stuff, this is uh, the kill rust that I used uh, underneath the bus on the um, chassis and everything. Uh, it says on the can here, of course, that it's um, matte black, even though on the the actual labelling of the can it says epoxy gloss enamel, um, but it is definitely a matte finish. Okay guys, so um, I've got the first board to do. I'll show you the old one, the one that came out of it. Uh, some of the stuff I'm going to try and use the old ones as a template, but uh, the first one in particular is so shot that I'm going to have to make quite a few measurements I think and just go off of that because the edges are all falling apart and look it's not the real size anyway so I'll show you the first one so this is the first board uh, as you can see everything is delaminated from the bottom for all this issue around the edges it's, I think it should be out here somewhere <laughs> of course it's um, all falling apart and rotted 
uh, so can't really make a whole lot of measurements off of this one. We'll just have to measure from inside the bus um, to see where it should have come to, I suppose, um, before it turned into this. Yeah, but I'll get on with um, getting on to the first one and cut it up and hopefully get it in tonight. Like I say, it'll probably just be temporary for the moment. Um, and then once we've got them all cut to size, uh, probably paint them on the top with an undercoat, probably. And then the underside, um, as I'm putting them in like permanently, I'll probably cover them in like a bitumen paint, something like that, so that it's uh, waterproofed, weatherproofed, uh, sort of a, a little bit of sound deadening quality to it. It does act as a little bit of an insulator. So um, once I've done, once they're ready to go in permanently, that's when I'll do that. So those two in the middle with the tanks, I'll cut them, but I won't, I won't uh, fit them as such, not permanently anyway, uh, at this stage, um, not till we get the water tanks. So uh, yeah, I'll get on with it, and um, hopefully we get to get somewhere today. By the way, uh, just as an add-on, uh, we're using a 15 mil ply for some areas and then the other stuff will be 10 mil ply. Uh, there is an area uh, in between the rear wheel arches where there's essentially a solid deck, steel deck. So that area will be doing a thinner ply over. Um, and then the rear and then the f further forward parts will be slightly thicker, which is 15 mil, um, which is thicker than was originally there, which was 12. So we're just going up a little bit just to make it a little bit more sturdy. The ply that was over the solid steel area was like six mil and it's now going to be 10 so we're going up that much that little bit more we might just have to shimmy some up a little bit uh, here and there just to make up the difference um, but we'll just uh, hit that when it comes to it when we try and level it up to, to so that they uh, match and don't have a bump in the floor okay so i've got my board ready to cut um i've got my, my jig down there and my trusty old makita skill saw or circular saw whatever you want to call it um that's been through some uh, some times i tell you just try to take a couple of fingers every now and then but um you're still humming uh yeah so i've made a little jig up down here um just clamped it down so i've got a straight cut and um yeah i'm going to start hoeing into it i've got some corners to round off so i know it's not going to fit but i'll i'll uh, i'll try it in place just to make sure i'm getting on the right track anyway i just don't want to mess it up too much because these boards are Pretty expensive at the moment, plywood. So um, yeah, hopefully I uh, get this right and we'll be um, away laughing. So I've got the basic rectangular shape here behind me, you can see that's, so that's my sheet for the back rearmost um, panel for the floor. And I've just been in the bus and um, cut out a little cardboard template for the corners that um, it goes right into the corner of the bus. So I've just used the scissors and this as close as I can get it. Um, so I'm going to use this to mark my sheet here um, just to get the corners So this is the first one uh, down, it's not screwed down yet but it's in place and uh, it fits okay all to the edges into the corners, it's all good. The next one is going to be a bit more tricky, it's going to be cut out around the wheel arches uh, just along here and right around here and I think it's going to come to about here somewhere. Um, and this one is going to be only 10 mils thick whereas that one, the first one was 15 mils thick. And that's because this area here uh, is all sort of raised, uh, this, this section of the, the, the chassis of the bus or the body of the bus. Uh, it's raised a bit higher than the rest of it um, where, the, where the first board went down. So um, this one's going to be a bit of a thinner board um, and it's the, that's, that was the case when the boards came up. This, was, this area here was only a 6mm board and that was, I think it was 10mm something along those, those lines. 
So um, yeah, we might have to do a little bit of shimming here and there to get it to fit properly. Yeah, so this is going to be the next one. Uh, so I'm going to have to cut a hole in it for the fuel sender um, unit there, just so that you can get at that, because that you do need to be able to get at that uh, from above. And yeah, it's going to be a bit trickier, trickier to cut around these shapes. But I have got the old board, which is mostly intact. So I hope to use that as a template. Okay, so um, we've got the the old board here. Um, it's come out of the bus, and like I said before, it's in pretty good shape. So um, I'm just going to draw around it essentially and use it as a template to make the new one. Um, it shouldn't be too tricky to do that. Although I think it might be a the new one's going to be a little bit shorter because. Um, this old one has actually got like a sort of a, a dovetail joint that goes underneath the next board in line but I'm not doing that I'm just going to butt them all up um, so yeah so th but uh, other than that I'm going to start with this edge here being my, um, my data measure if you like so that it's um, it's going to be the square edge and if I have to cut anything off I'll, I'll cut it off, off of this, this edge um, when I come time to to put it in the bus if it doesn't fit properly. But yeah, so I'm going to get underway and um, mark it out and then uh, cut it out and we'll um, hopefully get somewhere near the mark. Hi there, um, I'm just about to do the bitumen painting on the underside of the floorboards for the bus. Uh, we've already done a top coat, um, which I videoed, which is just a white primer undercoat essentially. We did two coats of that just to seal the top level so that um, no water or anything gets in there because those plywood panels are untreated ones, so we, we figured that that would be uh, it's a cheaper version than, than getting the treated. Um, so we figured that we would just make sure that we seal it properly once we got them uh, uh, cut out and ready to go in the bus. So this is the stuff um, that I've got. I got this from, uh, my, I think I got this from Mitre 10. Um, it's just a bitumen sealer. Uh, it comes in a 4 litre container and you split it in half and dilute it down and it comes out quite watery. So uh, I've done that now. I've got two containers here um, and uh, 4 litres in each and I think it's going to go quite a long way so uh, I'm going to get into it and um, hopefully get at least one coat on today.
so um, yeah, I've done one coat of the bitumen paint on all of the panels on the backs. Um, when I was mixing it, um, I followed the instructions, so it comes out quite thin, um, more like a fence paint or a stain or something. Um, I was sort of expecting it to be a bit, um, bit firmer and a bit, uh, bit thicker when it went on, but um, it's yeah, it's quite really quite thin and it soaks in quite a bit. So uh, I haven't really used much of it really, but I will do a second coat because it says to do a second coat, so that'll happen tomorrow. It was four litres which you split in half of water, so you end up with eight litres of it. Um, but I, I think by the end of all of this, I probably will have used maybe a litre. Uh, I'll probably find a use for it uh, later on anyway, I'm sure, because um, I've probably got to uh, make some plywood bases for the tanks that sort of carry on. So I'll probably use it um, for things like that. But uh, yeah, eight litres is probably going to be, um, yeah, I'm going to be using it for other projects for years to come, I think. Um, but yeah, so that's the first coat. Um, yeah, moving on, and tomorrow hopefully get the second coat done. Uh, I'm just about to put down the floorboards. I'm starting with the very back one. Uh, done all the coats of um, bitumen paint on the underside. Uh, and done the top coats of just a white primer on the top, just so that we can actually still walk on it, uh, the bitumen paint you can't walk on, but uh, yeah, it should be well sealed now. Uh, so that we don't get any damp through it or anything like that, it doesn't get any, get ruined by uh, moisture and stuff. Just about to uh, start putting um, this RTV silicon down underneath the first board, and I've sort of marked where I'm going to put my screws. I'm not going to put in a whole heap of screws, probably just about six to eight per board probably, just to sort of pull it down flat. Um, and then hopefully the silicon will eventually uh, hold it down itself. That's all, folks. <laughs>